Hello, my name is Felix Mohr. I am a program officer with the Discovery Grant Program at the Natural Science and Engineering Research Council, NSERC. Welcome to NSERC's presentation on how to apply for a Discovery Grant at the full application stage. This video is available in both English and French. I would like to start with a land acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge that we are situated in Ottawa on traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people. I would also like to acknowledge that there are participants joining us virtually from many other territories and recognize the historical and ongoing contribution of First Nations, Inuits, and Metis people across the country. The application for a discovery grant is a two-step process involving a mandatory notification of intent to apply, or NOI, which has a deadline of August 1st by 8 p.m. Eastern Time, or the next following business day if August 1st falls on a weekend or a holiday. Once NSERC has received your NOI, staff and evaluation group members assign each application to a primary evaluation group as a preliminary step. All NOIs are also examined to decide if a joint review with another evaluation group should be considered, and a set of additional external reviewers are identified. These activities all start before you submit the full application, so it is important that you inform NSERC if you anticipate that your full application will be significantly different than your NOI. If your full application includes major changes from the NOI stage, such as a change in research program or in the language of application, please contact the responsible program officer or send an email to the Discovery Grants inbox at uh, resgrant at ncirc-crsng.gc.ca. The full application is due at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on November 1st, or the next following business day if November 1st falls on a weekend or holiday. Once the full application is received, any required transfers between evaluation groups are done, potential joint reviews are identified, and the selection of external reviewers can be finalized. Both evaluation group members and external reviewers receive the application they will review in early December. External reviewers are contacted by NSERC after mid-November, and their preliminary assignment of evaluation group members to each application is finalized at this time. Competition takes place in February, which is when the evaluation group members meet to deliberate and vote on each application. Final results are announced in April. As stated previously, the deadline for full application is November 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Time or the next following business day if it falls on a weekend or holiday. However, unlike at the NOI stage, the full application must be submitted through the research office at your institution first. Uh, make sure to check with your research grant officer for your institution's internal deadlines to ensure that the research officer has time to validate your application before sending it to NSERC. The full application includes the application for the grant, the research proposal, the sample of research contributions, the budget and justification, and the CCV. Your Canadian Common CV, also referred to as the CCV, is also required in order to submit the full application. Your CCV, can be updated between the NOI and the full application stage. NSERC only allows contribution from the past six years to be included in the CCV, starting with the January six years earlier than the year ap the application is being submitted. It should be noted that the NSERC CCV that was submitted at the NOI stage can be updated before submission at the full application stage. Early career researchers, ECRs, or applicants who have held an independent academic position for five years or less. For example, to be classified as an ECR, a researcher submitting an NOI in August 2021 would have been hired on or after July 1st, 2016. 
The five-year window for being considered an ECR is adjusted to take into account instances where a researcher has had an eligible delay in research. All eligible leaves, for example, maternity, paternity, medical, bereavement, are credited at twice the amount of time taken. For example, a researcher submitting an NOI in August 2021 and who took a seven-month parental leave within the past five years must have been hired on or after May 2015 in order to be considered an ECR. Professional leave, for example, training, sabbatical, administrative, are not credited. ECRs need to self-identify on the research portal at the full application stage by completing the applicant category module. To be considered for one or more supplement or joint initiative, applicants must indicate it in the supplement joint initiative section of the application. The DND NSERG Discovery Grant Supplement is a joint initiative between NSERG and Defense Research and Development Canada, an agency of the Department of National Defense. The proposed research must fit within DND Defense and Security target areas. For more information, please visit the website linked on this page. The Northern Research Supplement is to augment and promote Canadian university based Northern research training and community outreach. Beginning in competition year 2019, the application process was added to the research portal and is no longer through the other NSERC online system. Submission requires two additional NRS specific attachment. The updates for this upcoming competition year include the addition of a weighted scoring applied to each selection criterion to provide more detailed feedback to the applicant. There has also been a change to the boundary used for this program, with the Canadian North being defined as the land and ocean-based territory north of the southern limit of isolated patches of permafrost from northern BC to Labrador, including the entirety of the three territories. This is further south than previous years. For more information, please visit the website linked on this page. Delays in research can affect both applicants and HQP. Eligible leaves of absence, for example, maternity, parental leave, personal illness, leave taken by the applicants for family-related illness, bereavement, extraordinary administrative duties, are those taken within the last six years. Please note that COVID-related delays are also eligible. Applicant leave of absence or delays can affect not only the excellence of the researcher with the dissemination of results, for example, publication, presentation, and others, but also the training of HQP that could result in delays in dissemination of results, like HQP withdrawals, and or an inability to recruit new HQP. The impact of delays is taken into consideration in the assessment of contribution to research and or training. Concerning HQP delays, considerations are made in the case of delays that are beyond the control of the applicants, patterns of prolonged periods of study, or frequent withdrawal from programs should be explained by the applicant. Applicant delays are recorded in the CCV under the employment section while HQP delays are recorded in the HQP section of the application. In both cases, applicants are asked to explain the duration, for example, the start and end dates, or the full-time equivalent if the delay is a period of reduced research and training, and the impact of the delay. The description should focus on the impact of the delay, for example, the period, the activities that were limited due to a delay, the additional time or resource needed to complete the training, and not on the personal circumstance of the applicants or trainees involved. NSERC has developed guidelines for the consideration of COVID-19 related impacts on research to provide direction on how to describe these impacts in the application. New since the competition year 2021 regarding leaves of absence, Applicant who reported eligible leaves of absence or delays are entitled to list 
contribution to research and to training beyond the last six years for a period equivalent to the duration of the leave or delay. The listed contribution to research may include presentations, interviews, and media relation, publication, and intellectual property, and recognition. The contribution to training may include the list of supervisory activities. Supplemental contribution prior to the last six years may be included in the following application section. The new two-page leave of absence attachment, past contribution to the training of HQP, the most significant contribution to research, samples of research contribution. Moving on to the review process, assessment of applications is a two-step process that separates the merit assessment of the application from the funded recommendation. The merit assessment step is the first step. This is completed by evaluation group members. There are three criteria used to evaluate the application. Excellence of the researcher, merit of the proposal, and the training of, of highly qualified personnel, or known as HQP. Each criterion is assessed on a six-point scale from exceptional to insufficient. This is the merit indicator grid that is used in conjunction with the peer review manual by the members when evaluating the application. It is on the six point scale from exceptional to insufficient. For the HQP, there are equity, diversity, and inclusion requirements. The grid provides a summary of the key points, but the peer review manual should be consulted to see everything that is assessed under each merit criteria. The funding recommendation step is the second step. This step is based on outcomes of the merits assessment and is completed by NSERC staff. Applications grouped into bins of comparable merits and similar overall rating within an EG will generally receive comparable funding. The animation on the slide represents an example of a possible outcome of the subsequent funding recommendation. As you can see, each of the five voting members submits their vote for each of the three criteria. For a normal five vote situation, the outcome is the median score. For example, the third score when ranked from highest to lowest. In this example, the applicant receives a final score of outstanding, very strong and very strong. Applications are then grouped in a funding bin in levels of similar merit determined by the combination of an applicant's rating or the three selection criteria. Each funding bin is assigned a value consistent with, within each evaluation group. This animation illustrates how the conference model works. First, the program officer announces the conflict so members in conflict leave the room. Non-reviewers do not participate in discussions since they have not read the application. The first internal reviewer presents their evaluation and recommendations, followed by the second internal reviewer. Additional internal reviewers provide additional input, followed by any further committee discussion. For interdisciplinary application, members from other evaluation group may participate in the evaluation of application. The chair ensures that all three criteria have been addressed before voting begins. The vote takes place. The median vote is the recommendation.